second earth. I hope I'll see it again someday. Mark Diamond looked up from the stack of parchment papers in his hand and took a deep breath. His heart was racing. The words on the pages before him seemed as if they were written by his best friend, Bobby Pendragon. But the story they contained was impossible, yet there it was. He glanced at the pages again. What he saw was frantic writing, Bobby's writing in smudged black ink on some kind of old-fashioned yellow parchment. It looked real. It felt real. But so much of the story these pages contained felt about as close to reality as a fevered dream. Mark sat safely locked in the second stall from the door of the third floor boys' bathroom at Stony Brook Junior High. It was a rarely used bathroom because it was at the far end of the building, near the art department, way off the beaten track. He'd often come here to think. Occasionally, he'd even use the toilet for its intended purpose, but mostly he came here to get away. At his feet were a pile of carrot ends. He'd been nervously gnawing on them as he scanned the pages. Mark had read somewhere that carrots improved your vision, but after months of almost constant carrot intake, he still had to wear glasses and only had a mouthful of yellow teeth to show for his efforts. Mark knew he wasn't a full-on nerd, but he wasn't running with the cool kids either. His only contact with the world of the accepted was Bobby. They grew up together and were about as tight as two friends could be. As Bobby started to grow up and become popular, Mark kept one foot firmly planted in kid world. He still read comics. He still kept action figures on his desk. He didn't really know popular music, and his clothes were, well, functional. But that didn't matter to Bobby. Mark made him laugh, and Mark made him think. The two would spend hours debating issues as diverse as First Amendment rights and the relative merits of Pamela Anderson before and after cosmetic surgery. A lot of Bobby's jock friends would dump on Mark, but never in front of Bobby. They knew better. Mess with Mark, and you'd be messing with Bobby, and nobody messed with Bobby. But now, somebody was indeed messing with Bobby. Mark held the proof right there in his hands. He didn't want to believe what the pages told him. Under normal circumstances, he would have thought it was some goofy joke that Bobby thought up. But some things had happened that, Mark, that made Mark think this might not be a joke. He leaned back against the cool tile wall, and his thought brought him back something that had happened the night before. Mark always slept with a nightlight. He was afraid of the dark. This was his secret. Even Bobby didn't know. Though sometimes, Mark thought the nightlight was worse than no light at all because a nightlight made shadows, like the dark jacket hanging on the back of a door that looked like the Grim Reaper. That nasty vision had happened more than once. It didn't help that without his glasses, Mark could barely see things clearly beyond the end of his bed. Still, the occasional rude awakening was much better than sleeping in the dark. The night before, it had happened again. Mark was lying in bed, drifting in and out of sleep. He opened one groggy eye, and in his stupor, he thought he saw someone standing at the foot of his bed. His mind tried to tell him it was just the shadow cast by a passing car, but his gut told him to wake up, fast. A surge of adrenaline shot through him, and his brain went on full alert. He tried to focus his nearsighted eyes on the interloper to confirm it was just his backpack. No go. He couldn't tell what it was. So he groped his bedside table, knocked over a mug full of pens and his Game Boy, but managed to grab his glasses. When he finally jammed them onto his nose, he looked to the end of his bed and froze in fear. Standing there, lit by soft moonlight streaming in through the window, was a woman. She was tall and dark-skinned. She wore a colorful wrap that draped off one shoulder, revealing an incredibly taut, muscular arm. She looked to Mark to be a beautiful African queen. Mark dug his heels in and pushed his back against the wall behind his bed in the futile hope that he'd crash through and escape out the other side. The woman simply raised a finger to her lift, lips and gave a soft shh sound. Mark froze in absolute paralyzing fear. He looked into the woman's eyes and something strange happened. He grew calm. As he thought back on this moment, he wasn't sure if she was hypnotizing him or casting some kind of spell because oddly, his fear slipped away. The woman had soft, friendly eyes that told Mark he had nothing to be afraid of. Shaza, shuza, she said softly. Her voice sounded like warm wind through the trees. It was pleasant and soothing, but it made no sense. The woman then walked around the bed and sat next to Mark. Mark didn't jump away because, for some reason, this all felt right. A leather pouch hung from a cord around her neck. She reached into it and pulled out a ring. 
It looked to Mark like one of those school rings you see on college kids. It was silver with a slate-colored stone mounted in the center. There was some sort of inscription engraved around the stone, but it was written in no language Mark had ever seen before. This is from Bobby, she said softly. Bobby? Bobby Pendragon? Mark had no idea what was happening, but the last thing he expected was to hear that this strange woman who appeared in his bedroom in the middle of the night had something to do with his best friend. Who are you? How do you know Bobby? She gently picked up Mark's right hand and slipped the ring onto his finger. It fit perfectly. Mark looked at the strange ring, then back at the woman. Why? What's this? He asked. The woman touched a gentle finger to Mark's lips to quiet him. Mark immediately felt his eyes grow heavy. A second before, he had been about as wide awake as anyone can be, but now he felt weary enough to fall asleep on the spot. He felt the world slipping away. In an instant, he was out. The next morning, Mark woke up at the usual 6.15 with the alarm clock blaring. His first thought was that he hated alarm clocks. His second thought was that he had had the strangest dream. He chuckled to himself, thinking he should cut down on the raw vegetables before bedtime. He then reached over to hit the snooze button and saw it. There, on his finger, was the ring the woman had given him. Mark sat up in bed quickly and stared at it with the gray stone and strange inscriptions. It was real. He couldn't feel it. It had been, wait, it wasn't a dream. What was going on? He dressed quickly and left the house without telling his parents what had happened. There was only one person who could explain this to him, Bobby Pendragon. But something had already happened with Bobby that gave him a queasy feeling. Last night was the county semifinal basketball game, and Bobby hadn't shown up. His parents were there, his sister was there, but not Bobby. After the first half, he went over to ask the Pendragons where Bobby was, but they had already left. Very strange. And Stony Brook lost. Bad. Everybody at the game was buzzing, wanting to know what had happened to their star. Nobody knew. When Mark got home, he called Bobby's house, but there was no answer. He figured he'd see him in school the next day and get the story. Then he went to sleep and had this strange night visitor. Now Mark wanted to know a lot more from Bobby than why he hadn't shown up for a basketball game. When Mark got into the school building, the number one topic of conversation was the game. Hey, Diamond, where's your superstar pal? He blew it. This better be good, Diamond. What's the story? Everyone was yelling at him about Bobby. That could only mean one thing. Bobby hadn't gotten there yet. Of course... Mark didn't have any answers, so he shrugged and kept walking. He went to Bobby's locker, but Bobby wasn't there. Instead, there were more angry kids waiting to ambush him. He chickened out, didn't he? Couldn't take the heat. Mark dodged them and went to Bobby's homeroom. Bobby wasn't there, either. Where was he? Something was definitely wrong. And then it happened. It started as a twitch at first, but quickly grew. It was the ring. It was moving. It felt like it was squeezing and releasing, squeezing and releasing. Diamond! Hey, Diamond! Where is he? More kids were closing in. This was not a good time. Mark didn't know what to do, so he grabbed the ring with his other hand and ran. He blasted through kids, bumping into more than he dodged. A couple of older guys pushed him back, nearly sending him sprawling, but Mark somehow stayed on his feet. The bell rang and everyone headed for homeroom, but Mark didn't stop until he reached his own personal fortress of solitude, the boys' bathroom on the third floor. He ran to the center of the room and held his hand out as if it didn't belong to him. The ring was still moving, squeezing and releasing, like a heartbeat. Then the gray stone started to sparkle. An instant before, it had been a solid gray mass. Now it sprang to life like a brilliant diamond. Beams of light shot from the ring and filled the room. Mark couldn't take it anymore. He yanked off the strange ring and threw it. It hit the tiled wall and bounced to a stop in the center of the bathroom. The beams of light continued to shoot from the stone and dance across the ceiling and the walls, making the room look as if it were alive with beautiful, dazzling stars. Then Mark watched in awe as the circular band started to grow larger. It slowly got bigger and bigger until it was about the size of a frisbee, and in the center of the now impossibly large band was a black hole where the floor should have been. The ring had opened up to a dark portal to... somewhere... From deep within this portal, Mark could hear the faint sound of musical notes. It wasn't a melody. It was a jumble of sweet-sounding tones that grew louder and louder. Mark backed away from the strange ring, not sure if he should turn and run or stay and watch the show. He was fascinated and terrified at the same time. The musical notes coming from the portal got so loud that Mark had to cover his ears. 
Whatever was happening, he didn't want any part of it anymore. So he turned and ran for the door. He was just about to throw it open when everything stopped. The musical notes ended so abruptly, it was like somebody threw a switch to cut the power. The dazzling light show ended also. The only thing that didn't stop was Mark's pounding heart. Whatever had just happened, it was over now, and Mark tried to calm down. He took his hand away from the door and looked back into the bathroom. What he saw was the ring on the floor, right where he had thrown it. It was back to its normal size, and the stone had returned to its original solid gray color. But something else was there, too. Lying on the floor next to the ring was a scroll of paper. It was yellow parchment that had been tightly rolled and tied with a thin leather strap. Whatever the event had been with the ring, the result was that it had deposited this scroll here on the bathroom floor. Mark approached the scroll cautiously, bent down, and picked it up with a sweaty hand. It was indeed rolled paper. Nothing scary about it. Just odd. Mark tugged on the leather cord that kept it together and gently unrolled the paper. There were four sheets, all filled with writing. Mark looked at the first line of the first page, and what he read hit him like an electric charge. He couldn't breathe. He couldn't think. This strange parchment was, was a letter to him. It began, I hope you're reading this, Mark. <laughs>